Gambies, you're welcome. Today we're making something super delicious. As a matter of fact, it's a very special meal. We're making ukwa, which is called breadfruit. In Igbo land, this is one of the things that you see in occasions that are reserved for certain kind of special guests. So somehow you get to tell if you're a special guest in most occasions in Igbo land, if you're served ukwa. <laughs> Usually rice is for everybody and ukwa is for certain kind of people, you know. So we're going to be making it today and I'm giving you tips and tricks on how to make your ukwa successful, even if you're going to handle a large quantity of ukwa. So keep watching, don't forget to like this video and share with family and friends, okay? Let's get cooking! So usually I sun dry my okwa. Can you hear the sound? Okay, so once you want to make them, bring it out like I've done. This is four and a half cups. You soak it overnight in water. But even if you can't wait overnight, one, two hours should do. So here is the one I have soaked. You can see the difference, right? So I'll be washing the spiritual and body of these breadfruits. As much as possible, I want to get rid of these things. Okay? And I want to get rid of any stone whatsoever. Sometimes it's almost impossible to be sure the brown peels are no longer there. Just wash them as much as you can. But as for the stones, you can sure do justice to that. Once you're sure there's no longer stones or sands in it, you're good to go. Here comes the first tip. Wash the ukwa into room temperature water, not boiling water. Because boiling water toughens it up initially and makes it cook much longer before getting done. So I'm pouring in room temperature water. So quickly, let's have a look at the ingredients. We have our chopped onion, the seasoning cube, scotched bonnet, crayfish, palm oil, the salt, and finally our smoked catfish. But for the ukwa to cook initially, we're going to pour in the chopped onions and the seasoning cubes. These are magic ingredients that speed up the cooking process. They act as tenderizers for this ukwa. Guys, have you tried it before? Try it and tell me what you think. So while the ukwa is cooking, I'm going to start prepping the rest of the ingredients, like deboning the fish. I don't want the bones in it because of my children. In a separate pot, I'm going to pour in the catfish, some palm oil, and I'll add to it some scotch bonnets, salt, and crayfish. And I'll cover this to cook. When it's done, I'm going to add my cooked sweet corn to it, and it's totally optional. So by now, the okwa was done and it took me about 17 to 20 minutes to cook it to the softness that I want. See guys, if your okwa is not super, super done, then it can never be delicious. Okwa has to be so, so done. So now that it's done, I'm transferring it into the spots where I have my fish and the sweet corn. And look at the porridge already forming, guys. One very important thing to note is that if you're not cooking your okwa with a pressure pot, you may have the temptation of opening the pot to stir and stir and that's a no, no, no. Until it's perfectly cooked, do not turn because once you turn it, it begins to burn and it may not cook any further, okay? If you found value in this video, please subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed already and click on the like button. I'd love to see your thumbs up and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. 
This gives you priority notification on all my uploads, okay? Don't forget to share this video with family and friends. You may be helping someone. Thank you for watching. God bless you and I love you as always. Bye-bye.